Welcome, my dear student and YouTube viewer, to Chapter 5's continuing coverage of thermochemistry. In this video, I will teach you about heat, work, and energy. Starting with some vocabulary. The first term we need to know is energy, abbreviated with the letter E. It is the capacity to do work or to transfer heat. Next is work, abbreviated with the symbol W. Work is the energy used to move something against a force. A work's magnitude equals the product of the force F and the distance D that the object moves according to this physics equation. And the next is heat, abbreviated with the symbol Q. Heat is the energy used to increase something's temperature. Now at this point you might ask, why do we use the letter Q as an abbreviation for heat? Why don't we use the letter H? The reason is because the letter H is used for enthalpy, which I will discuss in a later video. You might ask then, why don't we use the letter E for enthalpy since it starts with the letter E? The reason is because the letter E is reserved for energy. So really all of this mislettering is the fault of energy. Energy stole the letter E, which relegated enthalpy to use the letter H, which relegated heat to use the letter Q. This is why I jokingly sometimes call heat queet, because it's... <laughs> Because <laughs> it has a Q. <laughs> Queet. Uh. Anyway, I want you to take a look at the following examples and tell me, is it an example of expending work or heat? Starting with a person throwing a baseball. How about striking a match? Using a gas burner to boil water? Or enduring a terrible first date? I confess that in each of these, some of them involve an expenditure of work as well as heat or a combination of both. Now, as a disclaimer, I stole this picture of this person off of the internet when I typed in bad first date into Wikimedia. If this happens to be a picture of you or a friend of yours, I apologize. Although, I definitely would look into why. Now, as it turns out, there are two different kinds of energy. The first is kinetic energy, which is the energy of motion. If a system is actively producing or exerting energy, and I mean it's like in the action of energy being produced or used or, or given off or doing something, we call that kinetic energy. An object's kinetic energy, abbreviated with E sub K, is described by the following formula. E sub K equals one half mv squared, where m is the mass of the object and v is the velocity of the object. Now, the international or SI unit for energy is a joule, abbreviated with the letter J, which has units of kilogram meters squared per second squared. Confusing? Yeah. That's what it is though. <laughs> One calorie, as it turns out, equals 4.184 joules exactly with infinite significant figures. And a calorie with a capital C is the one we use when we read the nutritional information on the side of a package of food is equal to 1,000 calories. Now, frankly, I don't know how to pronounce these words differently. A calorie with a lowercase c and a, a calorie with a uppercase c, they, they're pronounced identically. You just have to like one is a, a, a calorie, or, you know, you just scream calorie. Or, I don't really know. The point is they are different. The capital C is a thousand of the little C's and the little C's are equal to 4.184 joules, the SI unit for energy. The second type of energy is potential energy. That is stored energy. If for example, a system is positioned to be able to produce energy, but is not actively using it. Then we say that the system has potential energy or stored energy. That is, it has some additional stored energy that is yet to be given off. This takes me to an example question from my student's homework. I want you to calculate the kinetic energy in joules of a 15 kilogram truck moving at this speed. And next, I want you to convert this energy into calories with a lower case. Now I invite you to pause, try this on your own first, and then hit play, after which I'll show you how to do it on the board. At this point, you might ask, Mike, why is your shirt on backwards and your hair so messy? The reason is that I don't sleep very often. <laughs> Anyways, I just stated earlier, the kinetic energy equation or the equation that interrelates kinetic energy with mass and velocity is this one. Kinetic energy, which I've just written E here, but you can also write E sub K for kinetic energy specifically. Contrasting with potential energy is equal to one half times mv squared, where m is mass, v is velocity, and you have to use SI units. The SI units for mass are actually kilograms, not grams, as confusing as that is, and the units for velocity are meters per second as opposed to kilometers per kilosecond or something like that. 
I don't understand the incon inconsistency here, but that's what it is. So this problem gives us our values, 1,500 kilograms, our mass, and our velocity, 20.0 meters per second in SI units. So I do not have to do any co conversions of units, OK? I just insert them in their respective locations in this equation. 1 half times mass in SI units times velocity squared. If I punch this all out and round to the correct number of significant figures, which is two, by the way, because this term actually has two significant figures because these zeros are not to the right of a decimal. So this actually only has two. So I rounded two sig figs, 3.0 times 10 to the fifth kilogram meter squared per second squared. And a kilogram meter squared per second squared, by the way, is a joule, which is the SI unit for uh, energy. So I've written that down or rewritten it as 3.0 times 10 to the fifth joules. That is the answer to part A. Now part B asks us to convert that joules or that answer for part A into calories, which is lowercase calories, not to be confused with uppercase uh, letter C calories, which I guess I'd pronounce as calories because it has an uppercase. I, I don't know. Anyway, the uppercase calories is the calories that we see in the nutritional information on the side of like a package of food that we buy. Anyway, this is the lowercase calories. So the interconversion between these, by the way, as I stated earlier, is 4.184 joules in one lowercase calorie. So I take the value that I got in A, which is 3.0 times 10 to the fifth joules. I use dimensional analysis slash unit conversion to convert into calories and round to the proper number of sig figs, which is two, because this term only has two sig figs. I come to 7.2 times 10 to the fourth calories, uh, lowercase calories. So, <clears throat> sorry, 7.2 times 10 to the fourth calories. We end then with this. I would like you, for the sake of fun, to tell me whether each of the following things have high kinetic energy, high potential energy, both or neither. Starting with a rock at the top of a hill, sitting stationarily up there, contrasting with a rock actively rolling down a hill. Yes, you might imagine, if a rock is sitting stationary, not moving at the top of a hill, it is not exerting kinetic energy because it's not actively moving. But it does have tremendous potential stored energy because it's in a position where you could just give it a nudge, push it down the hill, and convert a bunch of energy sitting there, the potential of giving off energy, into proactive, actively using kinetic energy as it rolls down the hill and uproots a bunch of trees and destroys a bunch of bushes and stuff. In contrast, a rock that is actively rolling down the hill is exerting, in that process, kinetic energy. Its potential energy decreases as it goes down the hill because it's getting closer and closer to the bottom of the hill where it finally comes to rest. Once it's at rest at the bottom of the hill, its potential energy from that journey is expended. I'll let you answer the following on your own then and ask yourself, does it have high kinetic, high potential, or a little bit of both? The examples are a rock sitting stationarily at the bottom of a hill a bowl of cereal, an unlit stick of dynamite, a battery, and proactively exploding dynamite, or dynamite in the action of exploding. I end then by sharing a really cool link with you, linked to in the description below as well as here, to a gas cylinder video where they point out the stored potential energy of gas inside a pressurized cylinder, as well as the effects that can happen when that gas cylinder is punctured or opened up. Now, I'm not gonna show this video to you here because I don't own the rights for it, but you're welcome to click the link below in order to watch it on your own because it is very fascinating.